Hi, this is Martin Fowler, and you're listening to the Agile Uprising. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Agile Uprising podcast. I'm your host, Troy Lightfoot. And with me, I have a couple special guests. They are release train engineers. Uh, so I'll introduce you. Uh, the first one, her name is Silver. So Silver, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks, Troy. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, Silver, so maybe you can just give us a couple sentence background about yourself and uh, why you're on this podcast. Sure. Um, so my name is Silver Calfo, and I'm currently a director in our technology program management office for GoGo. Um, we put Wi-Fi on airplanes, mm-hmm. and um, I've been serving as a release train engineer for the last couple of years or so, including launching of um, the Safe uh, Scaled Agile Frameworks process at GoGo, and launching a couple different arts, and now trying to um, lead. Um, and support that initiative. I see. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Nina, why don't you go ahead? Uh, sure. Thank you, Troy, for um, giving us the opportunity to be here. I'm really excited. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Naina Tavan. Um, I'm a program manager at GoGo. I am RTE for one of the art at GoGo. Um, I'm a newbie to GoGo. It's been six, seven months. And I'm enjoying, you know, being RTE at Togo, So Very good. So two RTEs, one former RTE. So Silver, are you still an RTE acting or you have moved on and handed that off to a new RTE? I'm, I'm in the middle of transitioning right now, uh, the second art. So. Okay. But I will still be working very closely um, with that team and, and, and leading that team. So Right. And, and your experience, like you said, is about a couple of years in that role. So we are here today to talk about the power of a great release train engineer. Okay, that's the title of the podcast. So before we can talk about what the power of this person is, if you have a great one, what is a release train engineer? Now we could go to the safe website and read all about it, but since you both have the experience, let me ask you this, and it's an open question to either one of you or both. Um, In your opinion and in your experience, what is a release train engineer? As the name says, uh, release train engineer, I think, uh, RTE is mainly responsible for steering your agile train in the right direction to deliver the business value. And now when I say steer the train, you know, it depends on what obstacles you find, what dependencies you find along the way. Removing that and uh, making sure all your teams in agile train are self uh, self-organizing, you know. So uh, I think basically RTE is responsible for driving end-to-end delivery of value uh, in the program execution. Okay. So, and so, do you have any other thoughts as well? Yeah, no, I, I, I support and agree with what Nina is saying. Um, yeah, and I think one of the fundamental things that comes from that's on the Scaled, web, scaled Agile Frameworks website is about, you know, kind of being like the, it's almost like a super scrum master position. Um, one of the critical things as well, and I know Nina is very aware of this, is um, the actual running of like the, the quarterly cadenced event. Um, for the planning process. And so that's one of the critical um, responsibilities of the RTE to really be kind of the orchestrator and conductor of that and pulling all the different um, teams together and the different leaders together to make that happen successfully. Okay. So that leads me to a follow-up question is that why do you feel this role is so important in SAFE and or Maybe if someone's not using SAFE, but they have a need to scale multiple teams to work together on a larger business initiative or business initiatives, why would that role of an RTE be so critical or important, regardless even of the framework itself? Yeah, so um, I would say that so if you're doing a large-scale initiative for... Um, for a company that has a large IT organization, you have a, you may have a lot of scrum teams and you have scrum masters who are very heavily focused on the success of that team and what's in front of that and what's in front of that specific core group of about 10 individuals, right? Eight to 10 individuals um, where when you're trying to create uh, solutions for um, 
a larger initiative and you need a greater number of developers or teams involved in doing that, there's someone who's kind of overseeing that um, broader scope uh, brush of initiative um, with those teams. So that's the critical importance, I think, of the release train engineer within that. And then they're providing that other layer um, between the teams as well as the uh, more senior leadership to ensure that delivery is happening and the value is being driven. Okay. Nina, do you have any thoughts? Because so far... Uh, like sure. <laughs> yeah. So I think Silver covered, uh, you know, uh, non-scale part, like, you know, any organization not necessarily adopted safe or not, but I'm just going to talk more from the safe perspective now, so that will have both the sides. Um, I think a uh, group of teams forms uh, Agile Release Train Art, which is actually, I think, the primary value delivery construct in safe. Um, and I think program increment is, is at the heart of the safe. So I think RTE uh, helps bring everyone together for two days to create a plan for 10 to 12 weeks for the organization. And I think RTE is I think main responsible person for the success of that program uh, increment planning. Uh, without planning, I think execution comes next, but without planning, I don't think execution would be successful. Uh, RT also makes sure all the pre-planning activities, like you know, making sure features are ready, they are prioritized with the product and business stakeholders. So I think RT plays an important role to make sure you know, um, all the inputs are there for the program increment. I see. Okay, very good. And I'll, I'll just chime in to add on to what everything you've said so far. So, you know, one of the safe principles, and I think this is a good principle for any organization, regardless of safe or not, is taking a systems view, uh, systems thinking, basically. And so, to me, the role of a release train engineer is someone who's, who's doing some systems thinking and not sub-optimizing uh, individual parts of a system. And when I say a system, I'm talking about a team of teams of people. And it's not only the Agile teams themselves, but it's also the people involved with the Agile teams. Then those might be managers, directors, stakeholders, you know, SVPs, um, you name it, uh, product folks as well, product managers, et cetera. So the RTE basically is taking a, a systems view of all the interactions between these folks, the processes, the quality, and thinking about how do we optimize this? How do we make this as effective as possible for the time frame that we're developing work, which in SAFE is a PI, 10 to 12 weeks usually, because those PIs have a fixed cost. So how do we make this as effective as possible for everyone involved and get the highest return on investment of every meeting we're in, of the way the PI planning is run, of the way the scrum is scrums and the PO syncs and the art syncs and all of the SAFE stuff, the system demos, you know, they're taking a, a view of how do we make this effective across the whole entire system of people and teams. And I think that's one of the reasons why the role is so important. So that's my addition. Make sense? I agree with that, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk about how, your backgrounds. How did you come into the RTE role? Like what were your background and, and how did you get into it? Because there's some people out there who maybe aren't RTEs, but they listen to this and they say, well, that sounds interesting to me. I, I would like to hear about Silver and Nina, what their backgrounds were, how they got there. So, uh, Silver, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, so, um, as you know, Troy, I kind of fell into this role. Um, I would say my background in general is if, if you ever looked at my LinkedIn profile, it's very much of a mishmash of I started as kind of... Um, graduating working in information systems for like ERP systems and doing development work in that way. And then um, eventually worked in operations um, and contact centers and, and a lot of different like project management, program management type of roles. Um, coming into this role, I didn't really necessarily apply for this role, but the organization was starting to roll out safe. And um, I had just been brought on to the technology program side. And I've always played, um, played the role of kind of the person in the middle of all the chaos to try to, to sort and, and order out things um, and, and ensure execution. And so that's kind of mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm really good at. Um, so coming into this, that skill set was, it just was kind of a very natural match. And originally our VP was supposed to be taking on the RTE role, which made no sense at all. <laughs> um, 
So I kind of just uh, like a few weeks before launch um, started joining the meetings for this. And it was just seen as we were all trying to figure it out together and learn it together. We didn't really know what, uh, what each of the different safe roles meant other than from training or from the website itself. And so I sort of just um, fell into it. So having a coach within our organization to help us kind of like steer and guide that was really critical, um, especially um, to what I feel like is the success of this role in our organization and what enabled to help me a lot more because I didn't have that background coming into it. I've done a lot of program management, project management. I've worked with technology teams, but not necessarily in the scrum or um, quote unquote like agile methodology. So mm -hmm. that I think is really critical. So if your organization is considering this, that um, the role of a coach um, cannot be underestimated. Nina, so y your background coming into this role. Sure. So I'm coming from quality and testing background. Uh, I was a QA manager before I joined GoGo. -Go. Uh, I was involved in a lot of initiatives like how I can shift testing left, what is agile testing, how organizations can adapt and, you know, uh, the agile mindset even from testing perspective, how we can incorporate BDD into our development, how we can uh, bring more automation uh, into the company and what we are testing, you know. I was also involved in establishing CI CD in my previous organization. So when this new opportunity for RTE role was presented to me, um, and I, when I just went through the job description, and I was like, I, I have never done this before. And then the first thought came into my mind was, I need to learn SAFE first. And that was my first step. Even before applying, I did one of the SAFE certification. Uh, which actually, you know, gave me idea about safe and everything. And then everything just, you know, worked my way. Uh, and then I'm glad that I'm working with Silver. And, uh, you know, uh, she's a great mentor. Uh, I think what I'm bringing in into this role is, I think one of the safe core values built in quality, mm -hmm. right? So I have a lot more insight uh, into how I can make some, changes in, in our current organization to adopt some of these best practices. Uh, and, uh, you know, like BDD automation, we are, we are working on our Jenkins CI city pipelines right now. So I have a lot more technical experience in those areas. So I think that is really helping me to be more on the technical side as well when we are bringing few changes to our art and teams here. Um, so even if I did not have any safe background, I definitely had, as you mentioned, you know, RTE role, not necessarily if, if the organization has safe or not, but I'm pretty sure most of the software development organization now adopting Agile for sure. So I think, you know, this is, this is a critical um, concept of adding all these different like built-in quality stuff and, you know, how we can be more predictable um, and stuff like that. So even if I'm coming from a different background, I think I'm gelling well with safe and all the core concepts of safe. And I really enjoy um, you know, my role here at GoGo. -Go. Great. Well, that's nice to hear. <laughs> All right. Very cool. So what do you think, um, and this, I'll, I'll leave it up to you who wants to go first. What do you think success looks like for a release train engineer? Uh, I'd be interested to hear Nina's opinion on this and like coming in and, and seeing what we've, we've done and kind of, she was really fresh at, like she said, for safe and yeah. viewpoint. Yeah, so uh, I can be a little immature <laughs> when I answer this question, but what, whatever I have learned so far in this new role is definitely, I think, success of RTE is definitely measured by success of art, partly, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, okay. Because as I mentioned, you know, RTE helps steer the, the agile release train or team of teams into the right direction, right? So all, like, basically, um, how are we delivering value to market, right? Time to market. Uh, value delivery, quality, built-in quality, how are we doing that, uh, productivity, um, or even the predictability of the art. All these success factors of art basically, you know, go back to RDE saying that how are we improving uh, PI, program increment over PI, and making sure we are, we are making changes, relevant changes we want to make. For example, we recently had some test organization changes to adopt to some of the some of the you know pitfalls we had, and uh, we just measured our success uh, from previous PI to next PI, saying that no, we definitely improved. We reduced the dependencies outside art, and you know we are we are going in the right direction. 
And I, what I strongly feel that RTE does not have authority over the content. For example, what features we'll be working on and, you know, what is the priority? I, I don't think RTE has authority over that, but RTE definitely has an authority over the processes and how we facilitate all the things. So I think, you know, um, the ma major success is how RTE builds self-organizing teams. And I'm going to add on to that before we get to silver. So, you know, a lot of these tr transitioning from waterfall to an agile way of working, um, a lot of people focus on culture where they say, well, we don't have the culture to do work this way, or we need to change the culture and all that. Well, culture comes last. You can't just flick a switch and change a culture. So the culture is changed by discipline and and discipline of what is discipline of processes, right? And they could be our processes put in place like, for example, Scrum or Kanban or XP and those type of processes and our technical processes, continuous integration as a process, not just the tooling, for example, or test-driven development or behavior-driven development, uh, even the processes, uh, so scaled up from, uh, from a safe perspective, all of the processes involved in SAFE, if we can get really disciplined at those and make them really effective, then the culture starts to change once people uh, develop uh, their own internal culture. They start to expect to do things differently. And as a consultant and a coach, I see that when I first walk into a place, you know, a few months later or by the time I leave, I can usually see a, a night and day difference in the, in the individual culture of how they think about the work and the way they're working. And then that scales up to the organization. Um, and so what the way I see that is the, the RTE is really responsible for helping change the culture of an organization because they are the, just like a scrum master is the quote unquote process expert, coach, mentor, et cetera, at scrum level, the RTE is the same thing, but scaled across multiple teams, right? And potentially up to um, a, an entire re release train, which can be up to, let's say, 150 people or something like that, very large release train. So uh, having processes and discipline to actually help enable cultural change is, is a key uh, aspect of the, of the importance of a release train engineer, especially when going through a transformation as well. So I just wanted to add that on there. So Silver, what does success look like for, for you as an RTE? Um. No, I agree with, with what both of you said, for sure. Um, there's, there's a lot involved in the basket of things that the RTE has uh, kind of oversees, but has somewhat little to no control over, which is it's pretty typical, um, I think, in the program and project arenas. Um, I think the definition of success is constantly evolving for an RTE. It, is, it really follows that trajectory of like the team formation of like the storm forming storming norming that whole that whole arc um yeah. yeah and so i think that's that that follows as well so like if, at first an rte who's just starting out with an organization that's rolling out safe is like very involved in ensuring like things are kind of followed by the book and making sure that um processes are followed right so um and trying to limit different changes or um and different tweaks that people are trying to make to the process coming on early out to ensure that it's successful. And just the mechanics of running that first PI is, is quite overwhelming. Um, so getting that off the blocks is, 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 is a great success, I think, for an early RTE. Um, as the organization evolves and they kind of develop that muscle memory, um, the art, each art develops its own muscle memory of how those things work. Things get easier so that the, the prioritization and the success of that is somewhat less important. Um, and then how the actual um, relationships of the teams and um, the, the, pro the product managers as well as the technical leadership is, um, is working to support and remove obstacles and helping the art become more efficient. I think that really becomes much more in the scope of what uh, success looks like for an RTA and trying to enable those, uh, enable and facilitate those relationships and connections um, to happen. So I agree 100% with Troy. Culture comes last, um, but as an RTE, uh, although you have little direct influence and authority, um, kind of as Nina was saying, to actually um, control the content of what's going on, you have a lot of influence to impact um, 
how how things are being perceived and, and run. And that is a huge difference in the adoption of of the process to the organization. Great, thank you. So what do you think are the, um, or what have been the biggest challenges for you personally as the RT? We'll, we'll, we'll go to a personal level. And also in addition to that is, what might be some more generic challenges that you could foresee? So either one of those kind of questions. Um, whoever wants to start, feel free. Um, so I'll take that. So pers- uh, I'll go first on that. So personally, I mean, biggest challenges, I think um, just it, the whole thing was very new to me. So trying to learn, learn everything and absorb all that along with um, – it can be kind of intimidating to run an event for 150 people and be quote unquote in charge of that and the responsible for that. So that can be a very large challenge. Um, and then as you're going along, like I said, this lack of lack of authority over these things that you are, you are responsible for orchestrating. Honestly, right. like you have, you have little to no authority of that, but you have to wield influence. And so how do you, how do you effectively do that? Um, it really tests um, your, the strength of your relationships within the organization. Um, I think, um, you know, Nina is very new to the organization. She's done a great job with that. Um, but I think as well, like you can't have an like a brand new RT you're just pulling in from nowhere and hiring them off the street without really strong support um, for different relationships in the organization, which fortunately I, I had because of my former role. Um, but that's, even with that, it's still very challenging. Okay. Uh, new to everyone. All right. Thank you. And Nina, any, any thoughts about the biggest challenges that either you've personally faced or that you could foresee an RTE facing? Either one. Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, regarding my background, so I had no safe background, you know, just I just underwent one certification, training certification, and then um, definitely coach like you and mentor like Silver has helped me a lot, uh, you know, performing all my duties in this role. And I think I joined organization, I mean, GoGo, where we were kind of getting a little matured um, in, you know, the whole PI planning process and events and stuff like that. So I don't think onboarding uh, this new role was uh, really very challenging. But I would say going forward even, you know, any change is hard and it can be for you or the teams you're working on. So whenever you're bringing in new good practices, uh, I think it's a little difficult to coach, uh, you know, team members to do things certain way when they have been doing it in some other way for years. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, I think that's, that's, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult uh, to help the art embrace these new changes. It takes a little while to help them understand why we want them to change the way they are doing things. Yeah. I'd say like, just to add to that too, it's, it's less about um, challenges specific to being an RTE to just in general, like Nino was saying, like any change is really difficult. So if you have someone, um, it's specifically difficult in this context just because it's such a large initiative influencing such a large group of people. So, you know, 100 to 200 people, right? So um, if you have a senior leader as, as, as you know, uh, Troy's very aware of our situation at GoGo that we had, um, you know, when you have challenging leaders, it's, it's even more important as an RTE to like, how do you navigate that relationship? How do you build that bridge? How do you um, try to wield influence to create a believer out of someone who's a skeptic, right? Um, and that goes across the board from the, whether it's a senior leader down to a developer, um, you know, within that context. And that's, that's kind of a challenge for anybody who's, who's trying to roll out any kind of change, but it's a little, it's a little more so I think in the RTE role because of the large, um, the large scale. And one of the, one of the other challenges that, um, that I see is some aspects of change management, right? A lot of times we do these large scale transformations or changes and there's so much change going on that people get like this change fatigue as well. Mm, yeah. Um, so, but sometimes we can't stop it. Meaning like the, lead, the organization has decided to go a certain way and make a bunch of changes and we have to go try to execute it. So because of that, um, but that doesn't mean that human beings aren't there and feeling the burnout of the change, right? So I think one of the other aspects of an RTE is understanding that how the human change works and how it's a challenge when it comes to burnout and, 
And um, the fact that people generally don't want to just change for the sake of changing, they have to understand why they're changing, how it's going to benefit them, how it's going to benefit the company. So I see two aspects of an RIT. One is the ability to train and also to not only train, but to ex- actually influence the why behind the decision making. So if you can not only explain the why, but be an influencer to where somebody could say, yes, I, I can personally see how this is going to benefit me in the company. Therefore, I'm willing to go kind of down this um, way of working with you as, versus, as compared to it being kind of just pushed on them, right? And they don't have a choice. So I think there's a, there's a real fine line there that an RT has to be able to be influential, uh, to be able to train as well as, um, you know, Explain the why and and be empathetic to the people that are on the train that are dealing with change fatigue, let's say, particularly. And also set the example in meetings, in events, et cetera, when you notice that the culture might be struggling, that people might be unhappy, that they might be frustrated. You know, set in the example and not kind of getting uh, brought into that mindset, but set in the example of where we want to go and, and the, posit- the positivity aspect, I think, is pretty important. It's also a big challenge, but the RT kind of has to think, hey, I'm kind of someone who has to influence others and try to get the results, and I can't get do that if I am uh, involved in the same mentality if, it's, if they're struggling, if they're being negative or, or snarky or critiquing each other or whatever the case is yeah. when you're going through the storming particularly, right? So there's like example setting, there's em- uh, empathy, there's change management aspects to it. That's all part of what makes a great release trend engineer. So I just wanted to throw that out yeah, there. Yeah, and I would say like in talking about challenges, I think that is really an important thing, like the example setting of it. So, yeah. you know, um, as an RTE, you are in a very exposed position. And so on your bad days and, um, you know, when, when you don't necessarily bring your best self to work, it can get a little challenging because yeah, people are looking at you all the time to set the example for, you know, kind of what, what does, what does it look like in terms of like how we're supposed to be approaching this and whatnot. So, um, Mm -hmm you know, it can get, that can be, that can be challenging at times as well. I mean, and, and also that writing that fine balance um, of empathy and really trying to persuade an influence in a positive way. But at the same time, um, there are times as an RT where like you have to be assertive um, and what that looks like, right. And writing that line. So I think the balance of, you know, trying to balance all those things is, is definitely a challenge and in terms of personal growth as well and how um what is your what is your personal attitude towards personal growth um because as an rte you really have to be um leaning very heavily on and wanting to develop your um eq your emotional intelligence it's really critical well thank you for that so my next question then is if someone's listening to this out there and they're not an rte and they could be in any role right now they could be a developer a scrum master, um, a manager, um, like, like an Ina was, and you were as well. Um, any role, w- what are the key skills you feel like an RTE needs to have and how could someone develop into, those, into that role and how could they develop those skills? Nina, I think you were on this journey to kind of get there and applying. So what do you, you've been very successful at it. So what do you think? <laughs> what was your secret? Um. I can just pinpoint a couple of, or more, more than a couple, uh, you know, uh, traits for, uh, you know, where people can focus on or if they can see it's in them, probably they can make a great RTE. First and foremost, I think is, um, you know, adopting agile truly. So there is a saying that doing agile versus being agile. And I think mm-hmm. you need to adopt both as an agile mindset, you know, so I think that's, that's one of the biggest quality any RTE should have. And um, uh, Troy also mentioned, you know, we need to focus more on systems thinking. I think that that's also one of the biggest quality of RTE as well. They need to think holistically, uh, and that's one of the Lean Agile principles as well, you know, regarding the systems thinking. Um, also, SAFE has some guidelines. One of the other guidelines is facilitator. Uh, we talked about program iteration, PI planning, and the execution over two days. Pre, uh, pre uh, PI planning preparations and stuff like that. So I think, you know, uh, definitely a person should have a strong facilitator, um, you know, uh, 
thing as well, where, you know, they should have techniques to keep the participants engaged, for sure. Um, I think another aspect can, I can talk about coaching as well, because I think RTE, requ RTE needs to have that uh, coaching ability as well. Um, and coaching can be on different aspects. It can be on technical versus non-technical aspects. I think coaching is also one of the one of the biggest things. And I think RT, all the four safe core values, which is built-in quality, alignment, transparency, and program execution. So I think RTE is at the heart of all these core values. So RTE should be able to hold on to all these core values together, for sure. That was beautifully said, Nina. That was beautifully said. I have to say, I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, and Silver, uh, same question to you. Yeah. So if you're looking to be an RT, I feel like the qualities that you can focus on more generically is just um, being someone who really is successful at working cross-functionally, understands relationships between people. Um, as much as there's a lot of the technical driving business value of that your success as an RTE to do that is, is how you bring out people's intrinsic motivations um, to get that to happen. That's really one of the critical things I feel like um, to being an RTE. Um, so whatever opportunity that you can have to work in roles that allow you to be in between organizations um, and, and learning how to build those strong relationships is really important. Um, and I think too, as well is like being aware of and recognizing, you know, that you're not going to know everything. So just as like in the, I think it's the agile competency framework, there's kind of something I would say akin to being an RTE within that framework as well, that you can't really understand or know or be master at every single thing needed to be an RTE. Um, so what I would say as well is like, so our styles, Nina and I, our styles are, 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 can be really different. And the expertise that she brings in the quality side of it is leaps and bounds exponentially stronger than what I bring to it. Um, where, you know, maybe I'm stronger in different aspects than she is right. Um, at this point in time. So, mm -hmm. um, what you bring to the table as an RTE can, can be powerful, but it, it's not always all you can't be great at everything. So these are different things that you can develop and work on, whether from the technical perspective or from the soft skill sides and relationship building perspective. Great. And, and Silver, I believe what you're referring to for the audience um, is the Agile Coaching Institute's um, coaching competency uh, model. Yeah. And that is basically, it looks like an X-wing in, um, in Star Wars. But basically the, the top of it is lean agile um, practices and uh, techniques and then you have uh, that's kind of the stuff that most people think about oh you're a coach you know how to do story writing or whatever right all the process stuff um and then um on top of that or on the side you have facilitation you have training you have coaching and mentoring and those are all things that are a lifetime you can improve at each one of those things um, and that you're never really done. I mean, you can always be a better coach, a mentor, a facilitator, or a trainer. And there are, and all of those things are kind of a profession. I mean, the coaching and mentoring is kind of, there's some overlap there. But if you think about it, um, there are people who are professional trainers. There are people who are actually professional facilitators, people, professional coaches. So an RTE is kind of someone has to grow all of those skills out uh, over time. And then we all have our backgrounds that we come from, either that's business, that's technical, that's kind of transformation background and organizational design. So and it's understanding that it's okay to have, not have a lot of skills in one of those backgrounds because you just didn't come from that. But it's, so it's like we all have our depth and then we develop breadth in other things that we're lacking. Uh, and then we kind of pick for a career path, which ones do we want focus on growing deeper at as well to, to grow. Um, so that's just, I just wanted to add on to what Silver was saying about the, the coaching uh, model there. So, well, and one will, thing I did want to add, sorry, I just remember this as well is like one critical thing. I think that if you really want to be a successful RTE in developing is, is really that servant leadership mindset. And that as an RTE, um, if you're the kind of person who like, I want to be in this role because it has such high exposure, has like, like some glory to it or whatever you want to say, um, then you're the wrong person for that role, to be honest. Um, <laughs> okay. Because 
the role is really, you have to be someone who wants to be able to plug in anywhere, whether it's, you know, Hey, like the pizza didn't like the lunch didn't get ordered. Okay. How can you think fast on your feet to make that call and then make sure that everyone gets fed, you know, and you're helping, you could be doing kind of quote unquote menial jobs of like ensuring that the AV is set up correctly. All those things that are somewhat thankless jobs are critical to the success of these events happening. Um, you know, and so if your attitude about those things is like, oh, somebody else should be doing that and I need to be involved in like the the preparation of all the features and working with the senior leadership on making sure um, that the epic writing or the prioritization process is happening. Yeah, all those things are really important as well. But I would say that in the importance of everything, it's pretty equal. And I feel like um, <clears throat> at least for some of the candidates that, I, that I've that I've evaluated, um, and interviewed for the roles that I've had open up for an RTE. Like I look for someone who is just willing to get in there and do quote unquote, the dirty work and the very non-glamorous work. So that's a really important trait of early tra train engineer. I feel like servant leadership. Great mindset. point. We didn't talk about that, but thank you for bringing that up. Cause I totally agree. Um, all right. So, um, words of advice. So this is your opportunity to say if someone is an RTE right now or they want to be or they're brand new, if you had to kind of talk to yourself from when you first started, what, what would the advice you give yourself and let's give that to the audience. Um, so just think about that for a second. Uh, and then whoever wants to go first, whoever has something they want to say, now's the time. I can go. Um, okay because uh, being new to this role and honestly i don't feel that i'm i'm very new uh, at ed because i think you know um, i think i got to hang off this role very well so i think one number one thing is challenge yourself uh, mm. uh when you think about this role and you know you you have you know that that you can do it just challenge yourself and go there and you know uh keep learning and reading i think that is also a big demand of this role if you are not safe, uh, then definitely uh, I would hi highly recommend that you have to go and do some certifications, do a lot of reading. And as you mentioned, try that coach, uh, you know, mentor or facilitator, you always get better at it. And it's a skill. So, you know, keep doing that more often and, you know, you'll get better at it. Great. Thank you, Nina. Silver, how about you? Um you know, I would echo what Nina is saying as well. Um, the other thing too that I would say is that, um, you know, it's, it's a jack of all trades role and, um, and training is important, but the actual hands-on skill, um, I wouldn't dismiss that. And I would say you're going to make mistakes. Um, you know, you're, it's, it's, it's going to be rough sometimes, but you have to recognize that as well on where, where you, you failed and be vulnerable to, admitting that and asking for help when you need that, um, whether it's from your direct management or um, from a coach from the outside or getting that different lens of things. Um, sometimes it feels like a lot of um, reminding and babysitting people, um, but I think that it's really important that you're kind of continuing to foster a certain kind of the environment that you're wanting to create. Um, I'm a huge believer in like culture starting with, with you as an individual and what you're bringing to the table every day. And so, um, although it may be frustrating and discouraging at times, I think that just really keeping that mindset involved in looking at like kind of where you've been, um, and how, and how far you've come with it. That makes okay. sense. <laughs> Definitely makes sense. And I have one word of advice then for the either RTs or potentials. When it comes to systems thinking and um, taking an economic view, that first safe principle. Uh, the, to me, the secret sauce of scaling Agile is lean. So at the team level, we have Scrum and XP and maybe Kanban and, and those, those types of processes. But when you start scaling to a program and portfolio level, the real secret to making all of this work is systems thinking and empowered by lean. And when I say lean, I'm really talking about reduction in WIP, managing queue size, um, as well as measuring throughput cycle time and using cumulative flow to analyze where your bottlenecks are in your system and how do we, 
how do we improve the system? How do we improve the flow of value? So one of the ways in SAFE specifically is something called an art sync, which is a systemic view of, of the program of all the features. And, and it's, it's based off of um, lean thinking and lean metrics. And um, my word of advice is to utilize that art sync and the program Kanban to really drive the systems thinking and focusing on the flow of value and not, not just optimizing individual teams, but how do we optimize the flow of value, the whole system of the art itself? And to me, that perspective and that coaching and guidance and mentoring from an RTE for the entire art from a lean perspective can be uh, very powerful. So my suggestion would be, there's a book you can start with, Actionable Agile Metrics for Predictability. <laughs> the uh, silver and nine, I might laugh or not, but because- um, I require it for reading for all my yes. people to start. <laughs> yes, it's required reading. So Dan Vicanti, I don't get anything for recommending this. One day, uh, then maybe it would be awesome uh, to have like, um, to go out and get some steaks or something. <laughs> the amount of books <laughs> I think I'm selling for Dan is fun. But uh, yes, Actionable Agile Metrics for Predictability by Dan Picanti. It's a great starting point. If you're going to start anywhere, that and Lean Software, Develop Software Development by Mary and Tom Papa Dick. But I would just start with Dan's book. It's easy to understand. It's kind of short. Gets to the point about the metrics, where to start. Um, and you can really, if you take that book and apply that to your art sync meetings, I really think you're going to get some great results from that. It's, it's just starting to change the culture and changing how we look at the work. So that's my word of advice. Just along with his words of advice, it is not an easy, like, buy it and get it going. It, 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 it's definitely an evolution. We've, we've, we've been trying to get it going for a while and we're still working on it. Um, but yeah, I agree with Joy on um, focusing on, on lean and, and the combo board and things like that. Do I say. Well, nothing great has ever been accomplished by being easy, Silver. No. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, if it was that easy, everyone would just be rich and doing great things. And it's not like that, right? Everyone would be, uh, have 10% body fat and there would be no struggle at all in life. So everything great, whether, whether it's personal growth, whether it's career performance, whether it's change, like we're talking about cultural change, there's going to be a struggle to achieve it. And there's going to be a, a, an amount of discipline that has to be worked to achieve that. And, the, and when you're working through that discipline, that's when it kind of sucks, right? So you can apply that to anything, but it, it applies to this level too, I think. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. So um, I think we're at the wrap up phase. So if, I don't know if you folks have a LinkedIn or a Twitter or an email or whatever you'd like to share. If someone wants to reach out to you, um, what might be a way that they could accomplish that? Um, yeah. So I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit. Um, so you can reach me on there. It's um, silver with a Y, S-Y-L-V-E-R. Um, Calfo is my last name. So I'm sure... Troy will probably have that in the show notes. So if you want to reach out to me, feel free to. We're always looking to learn more and to build relationships with other organizations that are looking at SAFE. Um, so um, I welcome that if you are interested. Great. How about you, Nina? Yeah, um, I think almost every individual uh, from software and non-software is on LinkedIn. I'm also on LinkedIn. You guys can find me um, on Naina, N-A-Y-A-N-A, -A -A, uh, Chaban, C-H-A-B-A-N, and you guys can contact me there. Awesome. And you can find me on our Agile Uprising Discord. I'll put the link in the show notes. If you want to go, if you want to come and talk about any subjects with any of the Agile Uprising board members, it's totally free. You can do that. You can ask questions. You can give advice to others. We have a little community going on there. We also have a free coalition. That's at coalition.agileuprising.com. It's like that, but it's not in Discord. It's just a public uh, little website. Um, and yeah, and you can reach me on Twitter at G4STroy. So I do have a LinkedIn, but I don't really use it, to be honest with you. I just don't like getting spammed on there by bunch of different people but uh that being said i said the best way to reach me is probably twitter and um discord okay so i just want to thank you for your time it's been a great conversation and i hope hopefully that either rtes or potential rtes or people that are just curious about the role or scaling agile in general got something out of this so i wanted to thank you for that